I think one of the things that you just said that's very important is that it's attractive to compassionate intellectuals, people that without really looking at what the potential for these these laws and regulations, what the negative potential for them is, the 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 underlying inclination to lean towards that is that you 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 care about people and that mm-hmm. you you want people to be okay and you yeah well you're pe- kind of treating them like they're your children yes and and i don't mean that in an entirely sarcastic manner um it's reasonable in some sense to treat other people like people that you love although it's not reasonable in in very many other ways which is why you don't invite every stranger on the street to come and live with you in your house i mean everybody puts up boundaries and, and you have to do that but, and, and people tend more than, than we ever expected, and I've done a lot of research in this in my lab, that people do tend to vote and think their temperament a lot more than, than anyone really realizes. And, and if you're kind and that's your highest virtue, then you tend to treat people like their kin, because that's what kind means, right? It's, it's an extension of the word kin. But that doesn't work well in larger groups. You need other principles. And so you you look at something like the idea of of equity, which is equality of outcome rather than equality of opportunity. On the surface of it, it seems perfectly reasonable to say, well, if every resource isn't distributed absolutely equally to every group, then the system is unfair. And on the face of it, that's a reasonable proposition, but it falls apart under minimal examination. So here's something to think about for for everyone who thinks that equality of an outcome is a good idea. It's like, why the hell are you striving for anything then? Because the reason anyone strives to better themselves or to develop a skill or, or to move forward in life at all is to pr- produce inequality. You're, you're trying to rise above the, the mediocre masses every time you make an effort at anything. And so everything that we associate um, positive m- movement forward to or positive motivation is actually an attempt to render the world more unequal. Now, you're rendering it unequal in a just way, right? Because we might say, well, if you work really hard, you deserve an unequal outcome. Well, yeah, unless you want people to stop working hard. And that was the old joke in the Soviet Union, you know. They pretend to pay us. We pretend to work. So it's, it's, so, it's, it's, it's so thoughtless. That, that's, that's the problem. That is a, a big problem with the phrase income inequality. You never hear effort inequality because effort is not the oh, same. Oh, well, you know, in, in, in some, on some campuses, and this is true in California, it's now considered a, a form of aggression. It's classified under the microaggression to say that um, hard work is the one, one of the reasons that people accumulate more, accumulate more, accumulate more value, accumulate more property, accumulate more money. It's, it's, it's an aggression. It's aggressive to say that because it implies that people who, who are poor don't work hard. Now, see, that's another terribly fuzzy form of thinking because there are lots of reasons for people to not have money, many, to, to be poor, let's say, which, which, is even, which is even different than not having money. Alcoholism, drug addiction, mental illness, physical illness, intellectual incapacity, and lack of work. All of those things contribute. Also, environmental factors, oh, what yeah, communities yeah. you grow up into, what you're being exposed to. People imitate their atmosphere. You're around people that are constantly in, in trouble with the law, and you're dealing with horrible environments. There's a lot of factors. Yeah. And I think that, that one of the things that's really important about having these discussions is that they, they break down these rigid ideologies that a lot of these kids that are going to these universities are sort of being shoved into. They're being shoved into these ideologies. You're either on the left or you're on the right, and there's very few on the right. There's no open market of ideas when it comes to discussing these things. You're compelled and enforced into yeah, well, certain John, categories. Jonathan Haidt is the he's a psychologist at the New York New York University Business School. He's done a really good job of documenting the dearth of ideological viewpoints, let's say political or temperamental viewpoints because that's more accurate in the modern university. And it's appalling because with along with all this push for ethnic and sexual and racial diversity, which I think is just a mask to enforce a, a kind of ideological homogeneity. There's no even understanding that ideational diversity is the only relevant value for, for, for a university. The rest of it's all predicated, say, on the assumption that if you do 
select people because of their ethnicity or racial background or gender, that that will in and of itself produce diversity of ideas, which is another really pernicious idea because it assumes that, and it's so contradictory. The left describes anything that's associated with the assumption that someone who's female, for example, will think in a female way. They regard that as an unreasonable prejudice. Yet they're perfectly reasonable to say that we need more women in X discipline because they will bring in female ideas. It's like, well, what, 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 what the hell are female ideas? You, you can't have it both ways unless you're completely, in, 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 unless you don't care at all about coherence or consistency and, and ideologues really don't because they care about putting their ideology forth. But the idea that you're going to get a diversity of ideas because you have a diversity of, of class of people assumes that ideas and identity are the same thing. And that's an absurd proposition. In fact, that's, that's, that's an essentially racial, racist proposition. Black There's... people think differently than white people. It's no, some do and some don't. And the overlap is substantive, and the difference between the individuals is far greater than the ind difference between the groups. I think we also need to make a very clear distinction between discrimination and people that are just inclined to gravitate towards different careers and different focuses. There's a big difference between women being forced out of tech and women being not as compelled to enter into tech careers as men. But yeah, well, that, that, that tech, the tech issue is a really interesting one for a couple of reasons. I mean, one is that... Of course, high tech basically developed after the playing field for men and women was more or less leveled. I mean, that happened in the 1970s. And despite that, there aren't any near, anywhere near as many women in tech. There's far more women in caring professions. And you see that particularly in Scandinavia, where they've done everything they can to, equal, to equalize the playing field. It's 20 to 1 female to male nurses and 20 to 1 male to female engineers. Explain that if you could, the Scandinavia yeah, well, issue, because it's very interesting yeah, what yeah, they've done yeah. over there and what the results have been. Yeah, well, imagine that there are two reasons that people differ. There, there are more than two, but just imagine for the time being that there are two. One is for environmental reasons, cultural reasons, and the other is for biological reasons. What happens if you flatten out the environmental reasons, which is what's happened in Scandinavia, is you maximize the biological differences. You don't get rid of them, you maximize them. And so what's happened in Scandinavia is that men and women are more different from a temperament and personality perspective and also in terms of their interests. They're more different in Scandinavia than they are anywhere else in the world. Now, what have they done to try to flatten things out, as you say? Well, they've transformed their social policies so that men and women have as close to equal opportunity, say, as any society has managed. But that hasn't produced the hope for equality of outcome. Quite, quite the contrary. In many situations, it's exaggerated it. And you could say that, that that's actually okay, is that what you, want, what you want is to have a society where the genuine differences between people are free to manifest themselves. So, for example, if you, if you have three or four kids, say, the kids are going to be uh, different from one another genetically. That's why they're not identical twins. They differ genetically. And if you set the environment up so that each child is supportive, the children actually turn out quite differently. Now, if you're an absolute brute and you beat them and you abuse them, then they'll all turn out the same because there's tremendous environmental influence on them then. But if you, if you form an individual relationship with each of them and allow their strengths to manifest themselves as they will in, in, a, in a supportive environment, then the kids are going to turn out very different. And so a free society is actually one that, that produces massively unequal outcomes because it allows the genuine differences between people to manifest themselves. These people who are pushing equity, which is equality of outcome, that's what the word equity codes for, by the way, equality of outcome and not equality of opportunity. I don't know what in the world they do with, with regards to the fact that a very large number of professions are, you know, high quality, high, high pay professions are female dominated. Physicians, for example, psychologists, um, any, any of the disciplines that have to do with human care are almost inevitably dominated by women, and that's increasingly the case. Is it, we're supposed to stop that? Is that also a sign of oppression? We're going to force women to do things they're not interested in?